In this video, we will have a look at the planning phase regarding the quality assurance of uh, photovoltaic projects. Um, you can see there are five topics. We'll have a look at the site analysis, uh, the irradiance analysis, then we have the yield report, the component benchmark, and finally the due diligence uh, regarding the technical, financial, and uh, legal issues. Uh, so first of all, um, the planning phase, uh, what's the, the, the typical duration of a project, uh, of, this, of this project phase. Uh, so the, the duration, of course, depends on the size of the system, uh, the location of the system. Um, uh, if we are talking about utility scale systems on a multi megawatt scale, um, then, of course, this uh, first uh, phase of project development of, of uh, the, this planning phase takes up to, uh, let's say, one or um, one and a half year. Uh, if you are if you are talking about small projects, the rooftop system that can even be done in, in, in weeks or a month. So um, that, of course, depends on the on the size and the capacity of the system. And of course, what is what is the goal of this first uh, phase in the project? Um, what do we want after the planning phase? Of course, we want to have the building permission that we can start to construct. So building or construction permission we can start constructing the PV, uh, the PV system, that we have all the approvals we need, all the reports we need, uh, that we can uh, go on. And now we want to have a look at these four, um, uh, the, these five uh, topics, uh, begin with the site analysis, and then we'll go through the other uh, topics uh, to understand what has to be done during the planning phase uh, during this uh, project uh, development. So first of all, we are talking about uh, the site analysis, so 1A site analysis. So what, what does this mean? Well, what we want is we want to get the project ready for construction. So there are several issues we have to address. We have the land procurement. so that we can start to, to, to use our identified location, the roof or, or the, the, the ground to, to begin the construction and to uh, operate finally our PV system. Uh, then of course we need to think about what's about the grid connection. So of course you have to talk to the energy utility, the grid operator, how to connect your PV system to the grid. It depends if you have a small uh, rooftop system, there is no big issue. The energy utility can handle this easily. But if you want to in install an industrial scale or utility scale a PV system, then of course you need to get in contact uh, how to uh, feed your electricity to the grid if there's any transformer needed uh, for the mid voltage or even uh, for the high voltage grid. So we have to uh, talk about the grid connection and ensure that you are allowed to, to connect your PV system uh, to the grid. Then of course you need all the legal approvals. That you can um, install your PV system, start with the construction that all the approvals regarding the environment, for example, are, um, are made, um, that you do not harm the environment, uh, although PV system is uh, not that, uh, or has not that problems like, for example, a wind turbine uh, regarding uh, birds or, or bats. Um, but of course, you, you um, are involved in the environment and uh, you interfere with the environment. So you have to be ensured that uh, the PV system, in particular uh, utility scale PV system, does not harm the environment. Um, so you have to do these approvals uh, as well. Um, then of course, uh, what's about the transportation of your components? So do we have streets or whatever that uh, in particular the, the modules can get to the construction site 
uh, that the trucks can can go to the location um, and deliver all the uh, all the components so that the procurement is, is ensured. Um, and uh, there are no no problems regarding this transportation. Of course, again, that's a minor issue compared to other renewable energy projects like wind projects, for example. You know, they have to ensure uh, that the trucks can deliver the load or the large rotor blades, for example, uh, onto the hills. Uh, that's uh, not that big issue in the PV sector, uh, but you have to ensure that the transportation uh, will work. Then, of course, you need all the technical documents. Uh, documents regarding the components. We'll have a look at this later on. But first of all, of course, um, are any uh, are all the documents available you need um, for your uh, your location? What you also should do is, uh, if you do this side analysis, of course, what's about um, shading, for example? We've talked about this in previous videos. Um, so are there any obstacles? Uh, this is, of course, an important issue if you have rooftop systems. Um, so you have to differentiate between, between the rooftop systems. So if you have rooftop systems, you need to identify obstacles uh, like trees, chimneys, uh, or um, other uh, issues. Uh, what's about buildings uh, close to your roof, which might uh, cause a shadow. So that's important uh, during the site unless that you go uh, on site, uh, take some photos um, uh, in particular of, of the horizon and identify uh, issues uh, due to obstacles uh, at the horizon. On the other hand, of course, if you have these um, ground mounted systems, Then in particular, are there any trees which are close to your location, which might interfere and uh, generate uh, uh, shadows, so that you get shadows if uh, the the sun is hidden behind these obstacles, in particular during winter time. And of course, what's um, about some hills or something like this that you have um, issues uh, that the modules aren't that flat mounted um, so that there are um, different conditions you have to consider uh, what's about a stony or sandy ground uh, do we have a necessary infrastructure on site um, so you have to determine if the site is suitable for a pv system of course so that means that we have to check the local Site conditions. And finally, we have, um, and let's call this the environmental stress assessment. Environmental stress assessment. So, are there any? Uh, Weather extreme weather events uh, like flooding, like sandstorms on a southern location in, in South Spain, for example, or in, the, in northern Africa, for example, heavy snowfall um, in at locations uh, at, uh, in the Alps, for example. What's about flooding if you, the system is close to, to rivers? That might be an issue. Um, of course, what's about soiling uh, due to, to sand, for example. So that are the issues you have to, uh, to um, analyze uh, during the site analysis. Uh, what's about the environmental or are there any, any risks uh, for the PV system which might reduce um, the yield production of this uh, PV system. The next task is the irradiance analysis for location. So 1B is Irradiance analysis. What you can see in this diagram that is the irradiance or the annual radiation um, of a location in, in Potsdam with the data provided by the PIK in Potsdam. So what you can see is that uh, the, the radiation of course uh, varies over the years. You can see 
um, higher radiation or years with higher radiation with, with smaller radiation and the uh, three uh, moving averages in, in blue in, in orange and in yellow show uh, the long-term trends with a decrease and then a re-increase in the end of the 1980s beginning of the 1990s um, so that at the moment uh, in, in Central Europe we observe an increase of the radiation and actually we are at let's say 1050 kilowatt hours per uh, square meter and this information is important to know um, for the location uh, for the planning phase as the solar radiation is uh, decisive uh, parameter for determination of the probability of a PV uh, system um, so you need profound information about the solar radiation of the past to predict the solar radiation for the next uh, at least 20 years because that is the basis so um, if you continue this this diagram and say okay what's what's within the next 20 or even 25 years so if you in, take this uh, time axis um, and say okay well, what, what will be the outlook um, we are within this bandwidth on the one hand that this will continue to increase or maybe we, we keep on a constant level that we are somewhere here or of course what might happen in in case of a decrease so we have this bandwidth of radiation and this is directly coupled to the yield uh, production of the pv system uh, typically you can use satellite data which is uh, available for all locations on earth or most locations on earth uh, on the other hand you can use uh, weather data which have a higher accuracy but uh, the, the weather data is not available for all locations as we have a special distribution of weather stations and uh, you have to interpolate uh, data uh, that might reduce the accuracy of the um, uh, radiation information. On the other hand, you need also other weather data, additional weather data like ambient temperature as the temperature also influences uh, the efficiency of the PV modules. Um, you need information about precipitation, uh, snow coverage, etc. Uh, so these are uh, minor um, components which might influence the yield of a PV system. The third topic is the yield report or the yield analysis. So of course with uh, using the radiation and additional weather information um, you will do a computer simulation to derive the yield. You need to know the system layout, which components are used, which modules, which inverter, uh, how are these um, components uh, interconnected. So um, what, what you do is uh, during this uh, yield analysis there is an evaluation of the system layout. Evaluation of uh, the PV system layout um, as you consider um, the shading, uh, the influence of obstacles which might be close to the location um, to, or for a rooftop system or a ground mounted system on utility scale. Um, of course what you need is or what you want to get is a precise prediction of the expected energy yield. So the prediction of the yield of a PV system uh, under different uh, circumstances. Uh, of course what you get is you have an independent evaluation of this uh, PV system configuration um, and the yield report is uh, typically the basis for um, the financial uh, calculations for the financial calculations uh, and of course for the risk analysis um, so you need to know um, what will be the outcome what's uh, the minimum and the maximum you can expect uh, to, to estimate the risk and it's uh, to be required for your borrowed uh, capital so that's a requirement 
for the borrowed capital. Um, if also investors are interested um, in the yield report, if they want to invest in this uh, PV project uh, later on, uh, they need a profound uh, information about the, the expected yield. Um, the question is how <clears throat> does this yield report look like? So uh, on the one hand you have uh, radiation information. Then second, of course, you have the system configuration. You have to consider which modules do you use, which inverters. Uh, you need the technical parameters of these uh, components. Uh, this is typically rather easy for uh, uh, well-known systems or components, but if you use uh, new technologies or um, specific uh, types of, of modules, uh, then it might be not that easy to derive this uh, the configuration of this PV system. Uh, third issue are the losses you have. What's about the cable losses? What's about um, uh, a transformer? Uh, what's about the losses of the modules of the inverter? What's about soiling, uh, etc.? So that has to be to um, needs to be included in this yield simulation. So then you take. A, um, computer program and then you have this yield simulation and finally what you get is you get this uh, yield report uh, of course this is a rather simplified uh, sketch as uh, of course this yield report includes also the uh, expert knowledge uh, about uh, the probabilities uh, of the, the yield and uh, the accuracy of the simulation to derive the bandwidth and the probability of this of this analysis. The fourth topic is uh, the components benchmark. So D is components benchmark. So what you can see in this diagram with um, how do the uh, costs look like of a typical PV system um, in, in Central Europe? So you see the specific costs are at about 1,000 euros per kilowatt peak. Um, so that's the data provided by the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. Um, and that's a mean value for all PV systems. Of course, the larger the system is, uh, the cheaper it gets. So, of course, you can install uh, systems uh, cheaper than 1,000 euros per kilo peak. On the other hand, of course, uh, smaller systems, rooftop systems, are typically more expensive, uh, let's say 1,200 euros per kilo peak, uh, or even um, higher, or they might have higher costs. What you can see is the modules are still the component with the highest share of about 40% of the costs uh, relied to the modules. And then we have the BUS cost, the balance of system costs, uh, the inverter, the, the wires, the substructure, uh, the project costs, and then we have all the other costs. Uh, of course, again, this varies regarding the type of the project, the, uh, varies regarding the location um, the, the country you want to install this PV system. Um, but you see what is very important is that there is a quality check of the components and probably the modules and the inverter. Do they fit together? Um, what's about the quality? What's about the track record of these of this manufacturer? Uh, have there been any um, quality issues in the past? What's about the warranties? So that information must be included during the planning phase to decide what is the best component for this project under uh, the conditions regarding location, radiation, interconnection, etc. etc. And the final issue are the due diligence you need. So uh, we have the due diligence. of the project regarding technical, uh, financial and uh, legal issues. Um, in this case, of course, we want to concentrate um, on to the uh, technical due diligence. So that means that um, you analyze the project from the technical point of view. So that's a deep analysis 
analysis uh, of the project, so of the whole project. Um, so what do you use uh, in this case? Um, you analyze or you consider on the one hand, of course, the yield report. Uh, sometimes uh, yeah, there are um, several yield reports. Uh, if this uh, if the system is a very large system, then the, um, the bank wants more than one yield report. Uh, what you do is you do a project audit. So you go on site, um, check the components, the planning and the design. Um, of course, what you also do is in this uh, technical due diligence, um, is that you have a look at the technical aspects of the of the different contracts. So we have the technical aspects of contracts with the uh, general contractor, with the EPC. So we also bar the guarantees, the performance guarantees, warranties, etc. Of course, uh, also the technical experts of the uh, operation and maintenance contract. So our M contract is analyzed, and all these um, issues are uh, summarized in the technical due diligence report, so um, that um, an investor can derive or can use this diligence due diligence report um, to say well, what are the technical risks so that is one one question so the analysis of the technical risks of the project so are there any technical risks and of course um, what you can derive is uh, can the, or if this risk can be quantified of course there are always some some risks minor and major risks so can these risks be quantified and of course, uh, previously identified, quantified, and can they these risks be handled? And can the risk the risks be handled? Um, So we have handled. So that's that's the question of this technical due diligence report. Um, also uh, regarding the legal due diligence, of course, this is done by lawyers. The technical report is done by the technical experts and engineers. So the legal due diligence is also um, necessary uh, for a large PV project. Uh, of course, um, the lawyers will check uh, the legal risks which might be um, or can be identified in the project uh, can they be handled um, of course it differs is it a new project or of course you can can analyze a running project or an installed pv system which shall be uh, sold to sold to a new investor and of course you also need a new due diligence and again use a new legal due diligence and finally of course uh, the financial due diligence um, this is about the financial risks of the uh, PV project what's about the cash flow what's about the debt service uh, regarding a worst case or a best case scenario and of course the normal case scenario are there any uh, financial risks? Um, uh, can these risks be, be handled? But mainly, of course, regarding uh, the task of an engineer, the technical uh, diligence is a report you have to be able to prepare. So you take all the tasks, uh, the previous tasks we have seen in this video, and summarize them in a technical due diligence uh, report.